Hello everyone and welcome to episode 21 of SSTO Space Program. Today's episode will be slightly different because instead of doing a regular mission, we'll actually take a look at all the missions that we have currently in progress. And while we are still launching equipment to our Duna colony ship that is currently in orbit around Kerbin, today actually we are launching a mining rover and a construction workshop. Uh, I won't be running you through these launches because obviously you have seen it multiple times already, I'll just briefly tell you what we are doing and why, but uh, we'll actually have a look at all of the major missions that we have launched so far, or the more interesting ones, and have a brief overview of every single one. So as I mentioned, today we are launching the mining rover and a construction workshop, a mobile construction workshop actually, using our OCOD2 launch vehicle. Two vehicles combined obviously are um, well below the mass limit that this OCOD2 vehicle can carry up into orbit and uh, are designed to perform quite different roles once they are on the surface of Duna. The mining rover will be responsible for refilling uh, the shuttles and sky cranes once we are on the surface of Duna. But that's not all. It actually has a second assignment, which is equally important, and that will be collecting all the material kits containers that are landed on the surface of Duna and delivering it to the uh, mobile workshop. The mobile workshop will be obviously responsible mainly for constructing the surface bases on the surface of Duna, and we will do it using a lot of material kits that we'll have to deliver to the surface, as well as pre-packed DIY containers that will generate using the ground construction mod. The sky cranes that will deliver those containers, as well as shuttles that will deliver the material kits and DIY containers themselves need to be obviously launched and docked to our Duna colony ship, but at least we have two more components already in orbit. But today I won't be talking about that at all. I'll be talking about missions that we have currently launched and are in operation. And the first mission I would like to talk about today is obviously our Duna colony ship. As you know, the construction of the ship is already over, the ship is completed, and now we are in the process of refilling it with fuel and equipping it with all the extra equipments and materials and uh, everything else that we actually need to make the ship useful in establishing the colony on the surface of Duna. We are refilling it with uh, fuel using the Routine Mission Manager mod and uh, our standardized tanker SSTO, and that takes some time, actually. Fortunately, thanks to this mod, we don't have to fly this uh, multiple flights um, manually, they can all be flown automatically, and that is actually um, very helpful. Currently the ship is um, refilled to one third and uh, is equipped with the mining forward station that are already docked to the ship, so it's still missing quite a lot of components. And um, right now its current weight, so with all the fuel and the extra e equipment it has on board, is about 3.5 thousand tons, and when the ship will be ready it will weigh almost 6 thousand tons, making it single largest ship in our entire fleet. Staying in the subject of large ships, another ship that we have in Kerbin's orbit, which is not as mighty as the Unicolona ship, but still pretty big, is Flame Leviathan, obviously. It's a space freighter that we've launched uh, quite some time ago that hasn't been used so far, but uh, it will be definitely used once we have uh, established trade routes between different uh, outposts on Moon and uh, Duna in the future. The ship currently holds no crew and uh, apart from that it also has very high payload capabilities. It can carry uh, 2000 tons to the moon and back without refilling or 1000 ton even further than that. So it will be a very useful vehicle in the future. Apart from big spaceships we also have space stations in Kerbin's orbit and the first permanent Kerbal presence in Kerbin's orbit is the Kerbin Research uh, Space Station I think it's called. And uh, that is obviously the first space station that we have launched actually quite some time ago, I must say. It's been some time. But nevertheless, the station has proven to be very useful. It delivered us quite a lot of science through the research that was conducted on board. And it surely will be expanded in the future so it can house more Kerbals and conduct even more research. Another space station that we have in Kerbin's orbit is the recently constructed Kerbin cargo terminal. Um, this space station is crewed currently and uh, hasn't been used that much so far because obviously we haven't really established any trade routes and um, this station has been designed as a hub for trade ships that uh, will be used to drop off their cargo and also refill with the fuel at least partially 
Right now, um, the refilling process of at least the most important fuel tanks has been completed, also using a Routine Mission Manager mod. And the station is operational and uh, in service, actually. It, uh, it is nuclear powered, I know that some of you were asking this question, so it does not require any solar exposure to actually generate power, and um, it's, it also has quite a lot of processing capabilities, so if uh, any raw resources are delivered to it, it can transform them into more refined goods, so hopefully it will see some use in the future. Apart from space station, we have multiple satellites in Kerbin's orbit, and uh, those kind of satellites are also present around different bodies, but I won't be running you through all of that, because that will be quite repetitive. What we have basically around the major bodies that we've explored so far are scanning satellites that are doing the scanning for the altimetry biome and resource scanners, as well as an array of uh, communication satellites that are serving as com relays and ensuring constant communication between KC and our deep space missions and missions on the surface of other planets. Moving a bit further away from Kerbin, on the surface of Moon, our first Moonar base, and the only currently that we have, Moon Outpost Alpha, is doing pretty well. The base is located in Moon Northwest Crater and it houses six Kerbals currently, and engineers, scientists and pilots, obviously. And it was designed as a very long-term uh, outpost, so Kerbals that can stay for over 30 years without experiencing any problems. The only thing that may run out before that time arrives are the supplies, but the uh, outpost is also equipped with some greenhouses that will allow it to grow extra food using the hydroponics. So if we supply it with fertilizer every now and then, occasionally, they should be fine for the next couple, couple of years at least. Even further away from Kerbin, in the orbit around Minmus, we have our second space freighter that we have launched so far, the Caron. Caron is slightly bigger than Flame Leviathan, mainly because it uses liquid fuel and oxidizer as its main uh, fuel source, and it also has payload capabilities of 1000 ton to the moon and back. Currently the ship is unmanned and carries no cargo, because we haven't established any trade routes so far, but actually our surface base on the surface of Minmus is um, getting very close to that point. Speaking of which, our surface base on Milmus, and the only one that we have, is currently located in the Great Flats and has been designed to actually be self-sufficient in terms of food production, which is pretty cool. It houses 9 Kerbals, so 3 more than our Moonar base, but unfortunately living conditions in that base are slightly less uh, lofty <laughs> than in our Moonar base, and therefore Kerbals that are uh, in that base can only stay there for about 9 years, which is still pretty long, but um, yeah. As you can see, the Ion Lander that we have launched not that long time ago has also reached the surface outpost no problem and is currently landed next to our base and will be used in the future to do all the surface recon missions that we have and we will be paid for by the contracts. We are leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence right now and moving into solar orbit. And the first mission that we have in the solar orbit is the Parker Solar Probe, obviously. The main mission for this probe has been already completed, and right now there is no pending assignments, because unfortunately in case B, doing science is a bit faster than in reality. But um, yes, I'm thinking about maybe lowering its orbit to actually be even closer to the sun than uh, the one million below 1 million kilometers that we have chosen previously. But unfortunately, this probe has very limited delta V, so I don't know um, if this mission should be cancelled or we should actually try to get even closer to the sun if possible. Another mission that we have in solar orbit is the Sentinel mission. This mission has been launched and designed to actually track asteroids that are endangering Kerbin, and uh, so far it has proven to be quite successful, has yielded us quite a lot of science and quite a lot of money through the contracts, and uh, right now it is still ongoing. I don't know if, <laughs> if right now it's actually doing anything, but well, the mission hasn't been cancelled, and uh, yeah, it's still, it's still running. And now arguably the most interesting mission that we currently have in the solar orbit, the Joule colony ship. The ship has passed the orbit of Dress and is now in the outer solar system on its way to Joule. It still needs over one year and 200 days to actually reach Joule, so quite a long time. And I know that some of you are very interested in the whereabouts of the ship, and uh, even though one year and 200 days might seem like a long time, it is actually just after the next Juna launch window will occur, so expect the ship to make an appearance relatively soon, actually just after we launch our Duna colony ship on its way to Duna. There were some changes in the crew status on the ship. I actually had to freeze uh, three Kerbals out of six that we had uh, to actually be sure that we'll have enough um, food and everything 
to make it safely to Joule system and uh, start the production plants going. But apart from that, the ship has had a relatively uneventful voyage up to this point. Now, regarding the missions that we have around other planets, I would like to talk about the missions that we have currently around MOHO. And as you know, we have sent two scanning satellites um, to MOHO, unfortunately no lander, but those two scanning satellites actually did a pretty good job at some mapping MOHO's surface and delivering us information about its surface features and biome distributions. Those maps are currently visible on the screen and if you would like to have them for yourself, let me know in the comments and I will make them available in the video description. Moving a bit further away from the sun, around EVE, our first mission to EVE using the hyper-efficient high-tech spaceship is currently over. That was a relatively successful mission. Not all the mission goals has been achieved as you know, but nevertheless we went to EVE, landed on EVE and then took off and are actually on our way back to Kerbin, which is already a success as you know. <laughs> EVE is not a very friendly place, especially when you want to leave it. And, <laughs> and then uh, we also had a chance to actually uh, land on Gilly and do some science there, so it's not that bad. We also have a scanning satellite, as you know, in orbit around EVE, and this scanning satellite has also finished mapping the surface of EVE, delivering us all the information about the biome distribution and the surface features. As you can see, the map is 90% completed right now, there are just some very small missing spots, but I expect it to be ready very soon. Now, moving even further away from the sun, around Duna, we have multiple missions going on, as you know, so I will talk just about the most interesting ones. And the most interesting one for me, at least, and the one that has proven to be exceptionally successful, was the Duna Research Space Station. This station, so far, has yielded us over 3000 points of science, due to the um, research it is conducting. There are five science laboratories on the station, occupied by nine scientists, one engineer to maintain, you know, everything on the station, and one pilot. The station also has quite extensive life support, able to support our Kerbals both in habitation and in food production for at least a couple of years, so uh, we can miss the next Duna launch window with the supplies, and I think the next one is the one that we will actually need to send something back. And during the next Duna launch window, I actually intend to send at least a small shuttle that would bring our Kerbals back to Kerbin if anything happens. But we are not too worried about that because on the next Duna launch window we are actually sending a big Duna colony ship to Duna's system. So we will also send some supplies for the station as well and maybe rotate the crew. On the surface of Duna there are actually two missions that are going on currently. One very active, as you know, our Duna rover Endurance that has proven to be also exceptionally useful, yielding us a ton of information about multiple biomes, doing all the um, dangerous research and uh, anomaly hunting on the surface of Duna, probably the most um, useful rover that I have ever launched in my entire career. And I must say that this is mainly due to the Bon Voyage mod that is actually letting us uh, control the rover autonomously that, so we can drive it for long distances without actually doing it manually. And this is helping us quite a lot. So Endurance so far has proven to be very useful and I'm sure that it will continue to do so in the future. As you know, Endurance has actually limited power supply that is limited to 1000 days. We haven't used much from that, but uh, it will eventually run out. Right now, as you can see, we have reached the poles and uh, we will be exploring the poles and polar craters in the near future. Another mission that we have on the surface of Duna is Artemis, the first SSTO that we have sent to Duna with three Kerbals on board and uh, those Kerbals are currently frozen in the cryo chamber because Artemis has very limited life support systems and very little supplies so those guys would totally not be able to make it to Duna and back if they were uh, present all the time. You guys decided that we should let them stay on the surface of Duna and wait for the colony ship to arrive and uh, this is precisely what happened. They are right now frozen in the cry chambers waiting for the colony ship to arrive and they will be involved in building and establishing the first permanent uh, outpost on the surface of Duna. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed the missions overview that we have currently in the SSTO space program. I thought that uh, since one chapter of this entire series is uh, nearing an end, I was thinking that this might be an interesting thing and also something that you have been requesting so far. And uh, yes, thank you very much for watching. I would like to also thank Sharax and all my other patrons on Patreon. Your continuous support is uh, very important and very helpful. 
You can also find me on Vidme and on Twitch, links are in the description. So thank you very much for watching, my name is Mark Froome and I will see you next time.